understanding the whole equation because i do understand whenever something happens like this is a kind of digital renaissance uh, i would like to anticipate with that uh, not more like not not much more expectation from there mm-hmm. only to check myself out that how i'm going with this wave as a fast mover not like the laggards yes uh, but absolutely you are right that the emailing and the basic marketing stuff we need to do because we are so so lazy yes artists loves to paint and they don't want to do anything out of that so so you're right i buy your point i i, I appreciate your uh, reasons that uh, where should we focus on uh, thank you very much thank you for letting me speak here yeah, yeah. thank you yeah my pleasure good question rob um, okay, next up is Paula, and then it'll go Ben, and then I'll get into the chat. Go ahead, Paula. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Hi. everybody. I'm calling from Argentina. I'm watching your exposition for the second time. It's very, very eye-opening. And, Amazing. But I read somewhere in your website and everything that you don't take international artists as your clients. Or yeah, so we, we, we had – that was like kind of our um, – our official position and we sort of set it as our official position and the reason that we did is pre covid pretty much all of our support was us based support right and so the issue was is that we just didn't we didn't have the time zone coverage to be able to give people in other countries the same level of like amazing experience that we have in the us well covid hit and we don't even have an office anymore Right, like we are a company of the world, right? Like, you know, I, on my marketing team alone, uh, we've got people spread across the United States. We've got uh, Juan, who's on this one down in Venezuela. We've got April, who's in the Philippines. Uh, I've got multiple members that are in Serbia. So th- we have now employees on literally every continent in the globe, and now we can offer awesome support for literally wherever what time zone you're in. So we do allow international artists now. But my question to you, Paula, is. Explain to me your sales. Are you are you selling currently in Argentina and you're looking to open up the U.S. markets? Are you already selling in the U.S. markets? Kind of wh- wh- where are you at with that whole process? Yeah, I sell in Argentina. The thing is, I do I sell here um, prints. I do mm-hmm. um, I I work with words and uh, with um, prints with words, mm-hmm. and I do murals. Mm-hmm. And that's my goal to get bigger in the streets and get a lot of uh, visual people going by. And, you know, that attracts a lot of, of clients to buy the small formats. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I sell in, in Europe and US, but very, very little because I did it when I travel and I had an exhibition. Yeah. And then I got someone to, you know, uh, interested in having a few of my things there. And I left a few things or if if they don't have what what the, they want to sell they ask me and i send it by mail yeah yeah one of the but one of the their prints it's easy it's sorry yeah, yeah. oh it's yeah easy. so easy yeah, yeah yeah kind of original one of the one of the beautiful things about you know print on demand right and print on demand is yeah. you know you, you can you can open up the entire north american market very very easily without having to hold any inventory at all and as long as you're not you know selling originals and when you do sell the originals you just have to add well, a t- well, wait, wait 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 but no i wasn't clear then because it's it's print but it... oh, no we lost her for a second paul are you still there i think we lost you for a sec there oh no i think her internet connection went sideways hi oh there you are you're back yeah we lost you for a second and then you came back oh okay yeah there you are hi better yeah so yeah uh, so what i what i do is it's not print on demand but they are letterpress yeah yeah oh yeah 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 i see so so it, you know it's not on demand mostly maybe maybe sometimes but you know it's kind of a little more complex but yes but yeah it, they are not kind of original work where i have to you know import export yes and those yes, kind yes. Of things. yes what what i what i meant when i said print on demand is like you know we have multiple artists that live in abroad and when they get orders on their website they fulfill the local orders themselves right and so let's say to use your example obviously you're getting orders from argentina from chile from colombia all of that you would take care of those locally because it's just easier but all of your north american orders that you would get the order comes in 
and you don't have to touch anything, right? The order comes in, you get paid, the printer gets paid, the printer prints the order, the printer ships the order, you touch nothing, right? So that's awesome. It, it, like it allows you to have like truly an international business. And then, you know, in addition to that, the, the two printers that we integrate with on in the United States, one is Bay Photo on the West Coast. I don't know if you know these brands or not, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm bringing them up in a second. One is Bay Photo and one of my lights just went out. Bear with me. And then the other one's Graphic Dimension. And both of these businesses, hold on. Both of these businesses do like 25 to $30 million worth of printing a year. And why do I bring that up? When you're shipping that much, you get insane rates on the shipping, right? So we have a lot of customers that, you know, from, the, from their North American orders, they'll ship to Canada, they'll ship to Europe, they'll ship to, they'll ship to Central America and Mexico. They don't care, right? Because the shipping is still pretty reasonable. So you can totally do it. And, you know, especially on yours, the paper ones rolled up in a tube, mega cheap make it cheap to ship so and you kind of organize that for for your international artists yeah or we do. you just yeah. yeah okay yeah okay great so so you're taking now uh international artists we are yeah. and, and the rates are almost the same or the same as the as same US yeah artists. the same okay. aside, aside from the conversion rate which you know you have to figure <laughs> out on your hand yeah horrible no yeah, yeah let's not talk about that but thank you so much patrick yeah thank you my pleasure happy new year um Okay, Ben is up next, and I promise I'm seeing your questions in the chat. I'll get to the I'll get to this too. So go ahead, Ben. Hi, a um, couple questions. Ben, do you Scroll. do do you do the stand up desk thing all day? By the way, I do the stand up desk thing all day. Good for you. Good for it you. Cha man. It changed my life. My back problems literally disappeared. Oh, good for you. Yeah, I saw you standing. I was like, oh, Ben's rocking the stand up. Good for you, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my question is. I've been a professional photographer for 25 years. Okay. It has always been the case that you generally need to show one type of work on your website. There's always been this argument that if art directors start seeing different types of work, they don't know what they're going to get, which of course is ridiculous. Photography has got a huge palette. Yeah. That said, is do, do, have you seen success in photographers' sites where they are showing drastically different kinds of work? Or do you think that it needs to be one focused kind of work? Because I have two, I essentially have long exposure, very fine art, uh, uh, architectural photography, okay. like very urban. And okay. then I have, I live in a beautiful place called Ojai. So then I have this, these really beautiful naturalistic color landscapes and they're very different. Yes. Yes. Um, so can you, can I love, that? yeah, I, I love, I love this question so much. And I love this question so much. Um, I've been doing this for seven years now. And what, what I love about it is one, I'm a hardcore digital marketing nerd and always have been. So I get that piece of it and I've been working on my customer stuff for a ton of times, but two, we have like a, probably like 5,500 active customers now. And I look at their data quite intently. And I don't just look at the data from like the analytical standpoint on like where the, where the sales are coming in from. Is it an email or a Facebook ad or Instagram or da da da, right? Or the prices. I look at all of it all the time. We study it. And if I'm ever in a situation, and I'm, I'm only a couple hours south from you, where I'm up in Ohio and you and I are having a glass of wine, and that, that art director person sits down and says that you need to have a website focused on one particular niche, I am gently gonna take my glove off, slap them across the face and say pistols at dawn, okay? <laughs> Everybody that gives that advice has yeah. never sold anything in their entire lives. And I've seen it time and time and time and time again. Now it doesn't mean you can't be completely specifically focused on a niche, right? You can, of course, that's great. But early on, you don't know, number one. Number two, you are the brand as much as the photographer he is. No one, under, no one ever takes that into full account. You are what makes you tick. The fact that you live in Ohio, California, the fact that you stand up and you used to have back problems, whatever it is, all of that is part of the brand, right? And right. you probably never taking enough of an active stance on trying to market that work and sell it directly. You don't know how it's going to go. And I've seen everything under the sun. I've seen people with, I'm an artist, I'm a painter, I'm a fabric, all of it. They put it all up, all of it sells. And, and little measure. And you know what? Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Others go in with their two bodies of work that they love and an 80-20 Pareto's law emerges, right? 80% of their revenue comes from 20% of the work. Okay. At that point, I might say, 
okay, uh, uh, Ben, this is your niche. The internet is the, the world is telling you this is your niche. You need to go in, all sure. in on it. Well, you'll never know until you've gone through enough active marketing. I'll do right. you one better. I'll do you one better. I I've seen multiple photographers, and this is like a, a normal a normal part of what we teach is called like pivots. We call them pivots, which you try out a new medium, right? You try not to try out a new medium, but a new subject material, a new a new venture, right? A new idea, and. That's led to like some of the biggest discoveries from from our photographers that I've ever seen. I mean, we got one guy that this is the example I always use. Does these like bitching night photography of bridges, and he's in, like like in the Minnesota uh, Great Lakes area. Turns out this particular gentleman also loves going into a certain theme park, potentially associated with a mouse, and taking long exposure photographs of the of the rides in there. He sells both on his website, and now he's selling four times as much of the second than he is the first. But the first ones are still selling, too. So right. y you don't have to feel like you're pigeonholed. And the art directors that say that have never attempted to sell anything in their entire lives. They just tell you what they like and think is cool. So do not worry about that. Fantastic. And then that's a great answer. I appreciate that. Yeah. Very quick second question, which please, is please. Be being a, a professional as long as I have been, Mm -hmm. getting my prints to actually turn out the way that I see them mm -hmm. on the monitor. Mm -hmm. What is, can you, how, how does, is there a testing period with one of the print houses? Yeah, yeah of course. Of course. Or... You, you, you can get samples made. It's, it's largely just not a problem anymore. And I, here's how I say it. I mean, you know, I grew up earlier earlier in my career and I did a ton of marketing for a paper company and was like super involved in all the calibration and color profiles and all of that early on. And I, I know it was a much bigger issue back then than it is now. Now pretty much everyone's using the same monitor calibration, the same color profiles, same printers, same ink, right? You know, the, the printers get so pissed off when I say this, but really it's it's turned into a commodity on a, on a, on a, on a large scale, you know? Like there used to be way more, um, art form to it now there's more like you know you're you're using a small local guy just for the service they're not doing any better prints than anyone else that's number one number two number two photographers always obsess over this to a high level and you're the only one that knows the difference you are literally the only one that knows the difference your customers will never know never complain don't care and so like you have to check yourself on that premise and say, like, is this really growing my business? But we don't have a problem with it. I mean, you know, Bay okay. Photo, you could drive to from Ohio. I mean, it's a little bit of a drive, but you could drive to and spend one day and nail all of yours and then you're done, right? You don't yeah. have to do it again. But no one even does that. Like most people, like, you know, maybe you get one occasionally here or there that's too dark or maybe there's a media type that's not for you, but largely it's not an issue. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. All right, well, that was uh, very informative. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah. And just out of curiosity, being a photographer as long as you have, so you have a service-based component to the business too, I assume? So, yeah, I actually have a production company. And about six years ago, I transitioned from just being a stills uh, shooter to actually being a pretty successful uh, cinematographer. Good for you. So we do online advertising and marketing for small and medium-sized businesses. And we're about 90% of our work is video and only 10% is photography mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Um and I just have this incredible backlog of beautiful images that are yeah. sitting on a hard drive that nobody's yeah. ever seen. Yeah. And I did show about seven years ago, I spent some time showing locally in Los Angeles and mm -hmm. I sold some prints and, you know, it was fun to do, but I have this beautiful new body of work that I've been creating and like, it's just like nobody's seeing it. I know. So I'm like, I would love for people to see it. And of course I would love for people to buy it and enjoy it. Yeah. Yep, we can help you. And if you can do that marketing for everyone else, you can do it for yourself too, Ben. Yep. Yeah, that's what will yep. move the needle. Yep. All right. All right. Happy Thank New Year. You so much. Okay, next up is Adnan. Go ahead, Adnan. You'll have to unmute. I'll let you know when you get it. Yep, gotcha. You hear me now? Yeah, I gotcha. Very good. Thank you. Hey, thanks for all the feedback. So uh, I've kind of been a hobby artist. Mm -hmm. Uh, and question is, um, I'm on the fence whether to go with you guys or not. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think to get on a website? How many pieces would you need to, let's say, make a successful beginning? One. One. And the, the, and the, the reason I say that is I'll just get started when. I'll just get started when I have 15 pieces. I'll just get started when I get the bank account set up. I'll just get started 
uh, when I know what my niche is. I'll just get started when I come up with my logo, right? And the hours mm -hmm. turn into days, turn into weeks, right. turn into years. You got to decide. And don't take it as a sales pitch. I know it doesn't matter if you sign up with us or not. Mm -hmm. You have to decide if this next season of your life, you're willing to grow this business and you want to grow this business. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to do that and you're willing to put in the work, we are a great solution for you. If you want it to be a hobby, you can have it be a hobby. Like that's not a, that's not a, you know, a bad endeavor to have. So mm -hmm. I think whether or not go with us or not, if you're willing to do the work, you're willing to learn, you're willing to market the business and you want to see income and revenue come from the business, we're a great right. solution from you, but you have to be willing to do some work. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, is um, I've kind of specialized in uh, Arabic art mm -hmm. and Islamic art. Okay which uh, I've actually, I've had him on Etsy and a couple of other uh, mediums, uh, Facebook. I've really had no luck. Mm -hmm. And I also do some uh, photography also. I'm like the previous caller, Ben. I do some photography also, and I've got pictures of the Grand Canyon. I also have pictures of apples, apple trees, mm -hmm. so, you know, different things. And uh, that's my dilemma is how broad can you be or do you how do you narrow it down yeah and uh the other thing is pricing who determines pricing let's say i do a 16 by 20 uh painting how do i determine the price or do you guys determine the pricing yeah we 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 helped set set some well let me say this broadly this is one of the best things about the art business okay it's one of the things i like the most is the pricing is utterly, totally, and completely arbitrary. You can set it at any number. You can go up at any time. You can go down at any time, and no one's going to know. No one's even going to ask you twice, and, and that's always the case. It's not like uh, people are walking through the store, right, and they're grabbing one of your pieces and scanning the barcode and then going into Home Depot and seeing if they can get it cheaper, right? Like, you know, there's, 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 it's not apples to apples. Mm -hmm. Practically speaking, we like a 250% markup relative to the print that you're paying for. The reason that we like that is a lot of the sales activities that we incentivize and teach our customers to do, we have you discounting a little bit. We believe that you know the sales process is an incentive, some percentage off, buy one, get one free, free shipping, whatever it is, plus scarcity, mm -hmm. sale ends in a week, right? That's mm -hmm. just a psychological formula that gets humans to take action, just period, right? So when you have a 250% markup, you can come down 10, 15% off the price to get the deal over the line and you're not going to be eating into your margins. That being said, we constantly have you experiment with price. More important than price, what you're getting hung up on is price point variability, variation in your price point. Everyone's followers fall into a socioeconomic bell curve. You've got, you've got the low end socioeconomically, right? You have lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, and the high net worth individuals. Far more important than what price you have is having prices for all of those people on the bell curve. And it goes both to, I want you to have some really extensive pieces in the shop, and then I want you to have some entry level pieces in the shop, and then some ones in between. And when you have that and you do regular marketing, the price thing gets totally taken care of. If it's crickets, you lower your prices. If things are going well, you increase your prices, uh, and you're constantly hacking at it, and it's 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 not an issue at all. Where are you from originally, by the way? Just out of curiosity. Um, born in Lebanon, been here for many many years. Many many years. Awesome, awesome. Uh, another question is, uh, like I said before, I've done mostly uh, Arabic and Islamic art mm -hmm. in your. A uh, vast uh, number of artists that you deal with. Uh, are there any that deal with that sort of thing? And what kind of success have they had, if any? Yeah, we have a we we, we have quite a few more. I mean, no surprise here. Doing Christian art, and obviously mm -hmm. the Christian art does pretty well because it's a pretty diehard niche. I would imagine that the Muslim art, you know, the Islamic art could be as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it it's just a it's just a, a question of where where you where the markets are, right? Like, right, right. you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, you wh where would you start, right? Like, I guess technically, what would you start with? Right, like I said, I've I've had them on Etsy, and I really have had no luck. Yeah, uh, Facebook. You know, I don't do a full uh, display of things, but I do. You know, I'll throw one or two or three out every now and then, and uh, it, know, it doesn't work. It, yeah, it doesn't work. Etsy doesn't work. You have to do the work, right? 
Unfortunately, there's right. no easy way, and that's that's really what I'm telling you at the end of the day. I mean, it doesn't matter. You put it on Etsy, you get in a local gallery. Like, unless someone's doing the marketing for you, the work's just not moving. But you know, the 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 Islamic work is interesting to me because there would be good advertising opportunities in all the various different Islamic markets, right? Um, you know, and I mean, you could, yes, you could be talking about the Middle East, but you could also be talking about Turkey. You could also be talking about Malaysia, right? You could also be talking about Pakistan, right, India, right. you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, mm -hmm. That's interesting to me on a, on a, on a certain level. Um, but you got to decide, you know, are you willing to work on the business, right? Are you willing to yeah, give the business sure. a couple right. of years? That's mm -hmm. that's the bigger question you got to ask, Anna. Yeah, yeah, I can, I'm retired. I can go full time now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks for all your feedback. Yeah, my pleasure. Mm. Thanks, for, thanks for hanging out. Um, okay, I'm going to go Edgar and then Nulathar. I hope I, I hope I said that name right. I don't know if I did. But go ahead, Edgar. Hey, Patrick. Thank you so much for all the information you've been giving us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, I, had a, I had a couple of questions. The first question was actually answered through, uh, through Ben. So okay. thank you. It's focused art versus broad art because mm -hmm. I know I've my art is just focused on whatever makes me happy that day or yep. that time or yep. whatever I'm inspired, right? So, um, so I'm glad that, that it's not an issue. As artists, you know that we're on Instagram a lot and we see a lot of artists that are focusing on just on you know, one, to, one particular character or one style and all of a sudden your work just seems like it's all over the place, right? Um, but I do enjoy the fact that that's, that's not an issue. Um, I think question number two was, how do you guys approach prints that are potentially signed by the artist because i know i'm a, i buy a lot of prints from artists and mm -hmm. i actually enjoy them when they're signed and they're numbered they're limited right oh for sure and yeah yeah you guys, yeah you guys do uh yeah so what guys... what our official position on that and sort of the, the the way we recommend folks do it is i like giving my customers options right and you get some people kind of kind of like i was telling adnan about having the 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 variability in your pricing you know what i like to do is have an option with either no signature or digital signature and it's cheaper and people will appreciate you for it and some people don't care if you hand sign it you think that they do but they don't they want the cheaper price and that's the type of buyer they are and that's all good for others they absolutely want you to hand sign it and if they do want you to hand sign it you charge additional for it and and, and they'll totally be okay with you charging additional for it because they understand and what you do is you put the order in you get it shipped to you it's already all boxed and packed and everything else. All you do is gently take it out, sign it, seal it back up, put it back in the packaging, and then ship it to them again, right? And that way, that way, um, they get they get the, the hand signed piece and they pay a little bit extra for it. And then you always you always have the opportunity to give them the option. So that's the way that I that I like to see it done. Um, oftentimes, people will just do the open editions. They'll never do hand signed on the open editions, and they'll only do hand signed on the limited editions, which are significantly higher price pieces anyway. Um, yeah. So that sort of solves for it, and then they'll include all the extra shipping. So there's a couple of different ways that you can play it, but I, I, I like the different options, right? It's like, you know, I also like, um, you know, open edition prints, like higher higher runs of the limited editions, 50, 75, right. 100, shorter runs, originals, you know, if you're if you if you're a, a hand painted artist, sometimes on different media types, sometimes signed and not signed. It's just nice to have the variability in your store. Okay. So with the way that it usually works, right, is that people mm -hmm. purchase through the website and it automatically goes to your third party. So they pick us so us as artists, we'd never actually see the print. We see the order go through, but we don't actually see physically see the print. Mm -hmm. So a user goes into your store purchases a print mm -hmm. and the third party picks it up and they just print it out and they ship it out to whoever ordered it. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So if they want, so if they want a, a signed copy. How is that going to work? If they automatically goes to the third party, it doesn't come, it doesn't come to me. So I can't. I yeah. Can't so in, in, in that case, it's in that case, it wouldn't automatically go to them. It would come to you. You would sign it. Like I said, it would be all boxed, ready to go. You just take it gently out of the box, sign it, put it back in the box, and then you're required to ship it to its final destination. That's how we handle those. Okay. So it'll be a whole different sort of like transaction. It, if they want to yeah. Sign yeah. I mean, a, a better way to think of it. It's just like a different item in the store. Right. Um, and it's like, Hey, this one's getting shipped to Edgar and not getting shipped to the end user. Okay, and then I'm gonna sign it and then I'm gonna pay for shipping to wherever it's going. Correct. Okay. And ideally, they'll actually, ideally, they'll pay for shipping because you charged extra for it, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you so much, Patrick, for that info. Yeah, thank you, Edgar. Okay, I know I'm gonna hack this name, but I think it's 
Nilofar. I'm just going to say Nilofar, but you're going to have to correct me on it. Uh, Nilofar, yes. Hi. I got close. <laughs> Hi, Patrick. How are you? Good. Is it Persian? <laughs> Uh, yes, it's Persian. Yeah. I'm from Iran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, are you kidding me? Yeah. I, li I live in Orange County. Do you know how many Persians I've gone to school with and grown up with my entire life? More than I could even begin to tell you. Oh, that's that's <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I live in Italy now for a short time. You know, like I'm studying my masters. Nice. Uh, but I'm I'm an uh, I'm an artist. I I do paintings mm -hmm. and uh, I do digital art. And I also am in NFTs and I sold two pieces in NFTs. But um, I'm quite um, new to the marketing, you know, work. Mm -hmm. Um, but but I'm starting out to to connect with people in Twitter spaces and you know do kind of my community. Mm -hmm. But I I'm I'm also new to your um, to a storefront. Mm -hmm. I don't have much information. Maybe that would be better if you put me in contact with someone or I can yeah. ask you questions because I don't know what is the services you actually provide. Is it gonna be a, like a website like? Etsy that I can put my art and sell it there and or also I I, I can have some consultation or marketing like things like that I would appreciate <laughs> to know that yeah I what, what I would do is I would I would sign up to get a demo and you don't have to do anything I'll, I'll have somebody on my team contact you and the demo is basically like test driving the car you get to see all the bells and whistles and see it's like an hour screen share that shows you everything um, and, and, and I would go through that and that'll give you a perfect example, a perfect idea of like, you know, all the bells, all the whistles, all the plans, all the ins, outs and everything that we do. Uh oh, I think I lost her. I think you hit mute. So, yeah. Right. Uh, I'm sorry. I couldn't I'm unmute myself. That yep. would be awesome. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Wonderful. I'll have you Thank contact you. you. Thank and you. just, just out of curiosity, what, what part of Iran is your family from? I'm from Tehran mm -hmm. um, myself. Nice. Like my mother is from Isfahan, but my, uh, I'm from Tehran. Yeah. One of one of my <laughs> one it, it, the the reason I brought it up is like one of my um one of my best friends growing up is his, or from college is named Brian Moganam. His his family is from Mashhad, and oh, okay. he, there, there's like a whole bunch of Persians that are in Italy as well from Mashhad. Um, so he, yes, he, yes, he, yeah, there he, are. I have many friends here from Mashhad. <laughs> yeah, he had he had yes. five hundred and seventy five people at his wedding. I couldn't believe it. Like, so, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't even know half their names. I thought I thought it was hilarious. But anyway, um, we'll 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 have somebody reach out to you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go through Art Jeffrey, and then I'm gonna get into the chat. Don't worry. Um, Art, you're up next. Go ahead, Art. Hey Patrick. Hey. Um, so uh, my question to you is: I'm a starting out uh, artist. Uh, I have a stable software engineering career, and mm -hmm. I am looking for the best one-year advice you can give um, on somebody looking to make a career switch. Mm -hmm. What should be my marketing uh, sales? Course yeah. So number one, advice? number one, let's let's. What are you going to tell your parents? Okay, because when you tell your parents you're leaving that software job to become an artist, I would solve that one. Number one. <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> I did tell them earlier on I wanted to, to be an artist, so mm -hmm. they told me to first earn the money to sponsor it, which is why I'm a software engineer yes. and I have a stable job. Yes. But the question now is, um, when can I quit it successfully and still be happy making art? Yes, yes. Um, a very, very good question. And so let me ask, let me ask you this. Have you sold your art to people not named mom, dad, brother, sister, family, friends? Um, yes. Okay. That's, that's step number one, because it, the reason I bring that up is everyone needs to sell their art to strangers such mm -hmm. that they know they have a product that the market wants. Once you mm -hmm. solve that problem, like, you know, that strangers are willing to buy your art, you know, you have a product mm -hmm. the market wants, it comes into mm -hmm. a marketing problem, but you're not going to like mm -hmm. this next one. I would say, I don't want you quitting the day job for three to five years. Instead, I want you putting all additional money into growing the art business, not taking any money out, not being reliant to live on it. And then by year like four or five, your business will be humming and you'll be able to replace that software income and you'll be in a much better and happier place. That's what I would say. 
All right. I'm going to be like, thanks, and Patrick. You sound like my well, parents. <laughs> sorry, I missed the last part. Oh, you're, gonna, you're probably going to be like, thanks, Patrick. You sound like my parents. <laughs> <laughs> no, where do you propose I invest that income? How do you, how do I invest that income in the so, starting? Of so the are you, and where do you live? Are you in India? Are you in the United States? Where are you, are you, where are you? I'm in the United States. I'm in Seattle. You're in Seattle. Yeah. So I, I think we're probably a very good solution for you. Um, but it, again, like the first couple of years of starting an art business suck. They suck. You have to learn how to run a sale. You have to start doing email marketing. You have to do regular and consistent social marketing. We have to teach you how to run live art shows. You have to do that consistently all throughout the year. Your first year sales, most people's first year sales are not that great, which is why I say like three to five years. You do three to five years, and if you really hit it hard, you might have a six-figure a year business on your hands, and that's going to be a little bit easier to afford the cost of living in Seattle and be happy than it is you know, trying to just start out, right? There's a reason that a starving artist is like a common moniker. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's what I would say. You, you need okay. you need to get a demo. We can help you. OK, thanks. Thanks. Right. Um, yeah, I look forward to somebody reaching out to me then. Sounds good. Thanks. OK, thanks. Okay, hold on. Let me, I got to grab Jeffrey. He was trying to figure out how to raise his hands and he couldn't. Did he leave? Uh oh, Jeff, I don't see you in here anymore. Oh, there he is. I got you, Jeff. Don't worry. All right. Jeffrey Gruber, you have to unmute. I got you. Yeah, I tried and it was blocked. Yeah, I, I I used to know how to raise the hand in these, and I'm like, where is that thing? I know, I got uh, yeah, then and they're constantly updating things too, so you, it's like impossible to like you know. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I'm back. Uh, I haven't done this call, but I did do maybe a half a demo, but I'm still in the process. So I own two other businesses. Okay. okay. Been successful. I'm there were one was a video marketing business and it was all about marketing. But this is the thing I've never really been that successful online doing anything other than just like basic payment or you know, just in general. Never mm -hmm. been. I tried in the video business to get online and YouTube and I, and I was doing videos the old school way. We, we, we sold millions of videos in Walmart, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, okay, uh, I, I'm painting 3D paintings. They're glow in the dark. It's called soul glow painting. It's a kind of, I don't know if anybody else is doing this, but it's fine art glowing. It's okay. glow at 3D. So it's really difficult. Like, I, the reason I haven't signed up yet is because I can't figure out a way. My, my art is performance art. It's like you have, it almost, yeah, like, it, yeah. it sucks because it like, it's everything I've ever done is complicated, but you have to see the light change and the, all three pictures come. Now, what I've done is I've taken photographs of all these images and the black light versions are incredible. Mm -hmm. Like totally could be sold separate prints, right? And actually all three for each picture could be. So I'm having, a, I just need to get some, like where the hell, who's going to buy a glow in the dark painting? Have that, you, have you sold any of them so far? I've no, this is like, I have, I've painted 40 of these and, People have come in my studio and they're like, holy moly, this is freaking amazing. I'm like, I know, but and they're like, my, like, yeah, I had like 12 people in there yesterday. Do they, do they, they only work with the lights off? Um, yeah, you have, basically you have to turn, you have to have the black light on, uh -huh. you know, and then you have to have a, a, an eternal lights off, but they are, the glow in the dark are so powerful. Like you, they can actually be photographed. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, I mean, so, aside from wanting to see them, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's definitely a curious niche. It's definitely going to bring up some some interesting, you yeah, know. How do you print that on a T-shirt? Now, do your printers print blacklight? Because I do. I have found printers that will do blacklight. I haven't found the printer to do the third layer, which is the glow. I did find a poster company in California. Now, can we bring in outside vendors? Oh yeah, hundred percent. You can. I mean, it, like the shop itself. Okay, it's it's integrated on our side. It could be anything, okay? It can be any e-commerce based site you want. You can sell whatever the heck you want on the website. We have people selling all kinds of stuff. But it integrates with print partners and we have a merch integration, right? So you can sell merch right out of the gates and that's all print on demand. But you can sell anything you want and fulfill it any which way you like, right? So there's that side of it. Um, the other side of it, I mean, one, I need to see the work. I'm totally, I'm totally interested in seeing what it looks like. And I'm, as you were talking, I was sort of tuning out and thinking about like, how the hell would I go about selling this? Like, what would be my I best, know, what, my I, best I, angles I to do it? I figured it was going to put a challenge out to you. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you could you could you could see a bunch of different ways it would go. I mean, what is it? What is it? What do you sell per piece? Like, what does it cost? Is it really expensive, or do you have well, inexpensive well, here's ones? The thing. This is uh, so I have quite a story too. I've, I've shot over a hundred hours of video on mm -hmm. every painting. I have a, a video on how I did it. I I was doing it. I didn't know I was doing it, and then after I realized what was happening and I turned the lights off and these things were glowing, I was like, maybe I should be documenting what I'm doing because maybe I've tapped into something like 3D painting mm -hmm. or something. So I did all these videos, right? And then I also have incorporated my journey like with the painting, like where, you know, what's happening. So it's, it's a, uh, and I work with this Aviva Gold. She's like 85 years old. She's the one who taught me the soul painting technique, which is everybody's a painter. And it just, you know, anyway. Uh, so the, the, the main thing is now is like, uh, they, they are photographable. Like I could show you pictures of each one and you'd say, oh yeah, I can see and, the, and how they light up. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not necessarily sure the, 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 the best way around it is necessarily selling prints. I'm just more curious to see how to sell the spectacles themselves and what the best environment is. Um, somebody told me I could get probably 15,000 for like one of these paintings. I mean, this guy, the, the local art guy here in town, he, he's like, Jeff, this, these are pretty like, I mean, but you know, that that's, I'm nobody knows me. So like, yeah. you know, like, not, thank you. That's something to shoot for, <laughs> you know, now there's all this NFT stuff too. And now nah, the NFT, the NFT stuff's not going to to solve you. I mean, my, okay. my mind immediately goes up there on like the higher oh, end. I lost you. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I pressed mute accidentally. Um, I would probably start right out of the gates. And what 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 part of the country are you in? In Prescott, Arizona. In Prescott, Arizona. I would start calling on all the venues where they have electric dance music, and I would start. I would I would I literally talk to the promoter and be like, "Look, you've never seen anything like this. You don't have anything like this. You don't have any idea how cool this is. I'm willing to come set them up. I want it to be your hottest DJ, though. What do you think, right?" And you know, you, 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 some people would laugh at that at the surface. Do you have any idea how much those electro DJs make? It is obscene. I mean, some of them are I getting paid like $175,000 a night for like a three hour set, right? What's so, it called? Electric DJ? Yeah, just, just electric dance music, right? Because one, the lights are off. Two, there's people on drugs, no offense. And three, um, you know, the, the, the visualizations there are front and foremost. So that's where I would start. And I would, I would take a whole bunch of shots that way. And the reason I would start that way is because you wouldn't even need to sell the pieces at that point. You'd probably just rent them um, per session, right? And then potentially sell things after the fact. So that's an idea. You know, I think, I think back to my days in high school when everyone, you know, because right, right when I was like, maybe not even high school yet, maybe it was like, yeah, tail end. Now it's maybe like, elementary school high school like everyone had like the 3d bob marley posters back then that were black light driven right like those felt ones right like and the grateful dead ones and everything else those were huge those were huge back in the day huge now i don't know how many people have black lights in their room anymore um well the frames have black light i'm building a frame that is optional mm -hmm. that you, you, you'll be able to turn the switch and it'll it'll black light and then if you turn lights off they glow and the glow versions are are the most to me, that's what I'm really focused on now yeah. because I'm bringing color into this green paint. So and it, that's where it's progressing is the glow version is actually the most fun, but you know, um, yeah. So it's, I don't know how I, and by the way, the drug thing is connected because uh, just to my part of my story is I, uh, over two years, um, I was in uh, Northern California and I went to a, Brazilian ayahuasca ceremony for three nights and I had two nights of rapture and I came out of this experience of painting and I haven't stopped and my teacher who came and I visited with her a couple of weeks ago she said super common you know yeah um, people have had these experiences so uh, and that's part of the art too is like all these images are coming are on the, all these images of these journeys I've been on for the last they're just Boom. coming out yeah so you are, you are you already have the narrative set up so that's that's probably where I would start Right. And, and, and try and get some traction right, right out of the gates and, and see what happens there. I mean, the, you know, the issue is, and, and, and look, every single solitary niche, every single solitary type of subject matter has its advantages and disadvantages. And don't, you don't ever want to underestimate what the advantages or disadvantages are. You never know. Sometimes like some of these smaller, crazier niches end up being gold mines because there's no competition in them. And you just have to tap into where the tribe is. Right. Right. Your biggest issue is that this art can only be shown at night, right? Or shown when the lights are up. It, you can see it during the day. Uh, for the most it, part. It, yeah, 
but yeah. you, that's correct. You yeah. need to have a dark room. Uh, you know, if you're going to, if you want it to work in your home, it'd be in a bedroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, at night, cause they're very soothing. The images, uh, the, for me, like they put me to sleep. They're just very comforting images, you know? So, uh, in a bedroom would be great. Cause then you'd have the experience of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's probably where I would start. I mean, I, and, 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 and I would say do that before you sign up because I want to make sure that you can sell these things before you decide to pour a bunch of energy into the, into the marketing. Right. And you just well, need to, feel, that's why I haven't signed up yet. I would have yeah. done it all. But I feel like I need to, uh, so I'm going to stay in touch with you guys. And if you want to do a call and give me ideas, I'll glad, cause it, if I can find that, then yeah, I'll move forward. Yeah. You know? Love it. Yeah. I, it, it, it's, it's the same for everybody. Like you, you have to, you have to sell the product first to strangers to know you have a market. Then you have, then you have a marketing problem like all the rest, but until you sort that first, you still have a validation problem and that's what you need to do. And so I would, I would start there. Um, you know, again, in terms of the black lights. Yeah. I, I, I would start there. I would start with, and I'm sure there's some big raves and some big electronic music things in Arizona. If not, Lord knows, and there's so many in Vegas, it could be worthwhile to just load the car up with some pieces and drive to Vegas and show as many of them as you could, right? Like Vegas is not that far of a drive from you. Um, so I think I think that's what I would do. Vegas would be amazing. Like, yeah. Now, uh, a window at night and have the painting sitting in somebody's like retail window. Exactly. And all the yeah. Paintings. Yeah. Yeah. I just, sell it i just want people to see it with my exactly exactly and then and then and then get some sales and then once you have some sales then then we can really start 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 cooking on it okay all right thank you yeah thank you jeff all right i'm going back to the chat now i promise i will get these questions um arlene saying i paint acrylic and impasto style in order to show the paintings at their best the challenge is lighting how do I learn what lights to buy and how do I best show the texture shadow of my paintings? That is total Google question, Arlene. Um, I can't really answer that one for you um, in, in, unless I see it. Um, all right, so that was on Arlene's. I think you cleaned up the rest of these one. Let's see. Zooming is very useful to understand. How do things work? I'm very interested. Yeah, Jamie requested a demo. The, the, the demo is the, the next best step. And I know we're raising our prices in January. If you're just getting started, don't worry about it. But we, we couldn't deal with the overflow that we had over the over the new year. So it's a great time to see a demo and you still get cheaper pricing. Um, where else? I know there were some other questions. How do we obtain business website from ASF for a cost? Yeah, Jamie and Demo will tell you that. Jeffrey, I got your question. Um, Catherine saying you make jewelry. Yeah, it's okay. You can you can sell jewelry on the site, just the same as anything else. It's not a problem at all. Um, like I said, you can pretty much sell anything on it. Um, yes, Twinkie, we have all the specialty papers. You know, fine art paper, canvas, metal, all of them. Um, Sonia, we talked about the 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 numbers. Um, yeah, Jay, we teach you to do the marketing, but it's you're you're on the hook to do it, and that's like one of the biggest fallacies of the whole thing. Like, there, trust me, I know. Okay, I've talked to so many of you guys over the years. There's not anyone that talks to more. Deep down, all of you want to just create and not do anything else, right? And 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 a fantastic way to think about this business. The number one way to grow it. Is think of the thing you want to do the least. That's the only thing you have to do because it's the highest ROI. And for all artists and photographers, that comes down to doing their own marketing. The marketing needs to be done if you want to grow a business. It's the only way to successfully grow a business. Um, pretty much full stop. So we teach you how to do it, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do the work. We'll show you the door, but you gotta be the one to walk through it. Um, but I can see you on video, Jay. I don't know. Does that does that answer your question? I'll unmute you just in case. It looks like Jay's covered. Okay. No, I, that's fine. I, I answered. Yeah. You answered it. It's yeah. Cool. I mean, it sucks. I wish there was an easier way, but no, it's that's fine. It's also it's also the thing that bums me out more than anything else because what does everyone do? They just go from one solution to another solution to another solution where they don't have to do the marketing, and what happens? The business never grows. It's literally the only thing that works. It really is the only thing that works. No, I mean, it's fine. I I mean, I've been freelancing for my entire life, so I I, I get the process. It's just you know, just didn't know if that was that was part of the the service yeah. the monthly or what that's all good Thanks. what was what's the nature of your freelancing just out of curiosity um photography photography so it's yeah. a, a service-based component to the business and then and then also trying to sell fun art yeah correct gotcha 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 yeah. that's all good though i mean I, but I, I mean the first part of the stuff that you talked about is is for me it's always been 100 percent true i don't get jobs from people staring at me online or my are my images online? I get as soon as people meet me, then 
then I get the work yep. because they, they feel the trust or they see the, the work that I put into it, whatever, you know? Yep. And so they and, and then they have a relationship. They know, like, and trust you. They refer you. Jay is great. He did fantastic on this. Like it's just, it's the exact same way with the art sales, but I would imagine the majority of your freelance customers don't know that you have fine art for sale. Do they? Uh, they don't because I've never done. It. Got so it. Oh, it's it, an, it's I'm new. just, okay. as you said, this is just going to be another revenue stream. That's yeah. All. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, in many ways it's, in, well, I, everyone's situation is a little bit different, but in, in so many different ways, it's easier for the photographers than it is for the artist because the artist, they don't have a revenue source in the business like guys like you do, right? Like yeah. you have income coming in from the from the service based portion of your business. Now you know fundamentally in your soul that you don't want to keep trading dollars for hours for the rest of your life. That doesn't work, right? You know, you, you can only keep raising your prices and be the best you are gonna be at that business, but at least you have a revenue source coming in, right? Like yeah. for a lot of the artists, I would say like, you know, 80% of our artist customers, full-time jobs, full-time jobs. They wanna make this thing turn into something, but they have full-time jobs and that's okay. But then you're, you're left on the margin time. You, all of these people that you've done work for that appreciate your creative aesthetic, they know, like, and trust you, and they've never known that you sold art. So we have this low hanging fruit. If we just go back and let all these people know, hey guys, it's me, Jay. Just wanted to let you know, in addition to everything else, I've also got art for sale. There are sales that are generated instantaneously every single solitary time solely because people buy art from people they know and like and trust, right? And you've already won a ton of those people over. You just never let them know. So you have this automatic built-in customer base versus if, if an artist is doing customer service work, they're not necessarily gonna buy at the same cliff, right? So I, 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 I like it. I wish more photographers would do it. And I wish more photographers would have the perspective. My fine art business is not going to take over my main income stream in one day, right? It's going to take me a couple of three to five to seven years to cook this thing. But if I start slow cooking it now and the business is growing year over year over year, there's going to be a point in time in my life where I can start saying, I don't need that job. I don't even want to take that job. I've got print revenue coming in, right? It's the same, it's the same thing, especially like, you know, that infuriate the hell out of me and sorry to go on a rant. No, no, let me just finish this rant. But the, the portrait based photographers, okay. My buddy's wife's really talented. She, we all have kids. Uh, she, she picks one spot, knows her lighting and runs through like 40 families, right. On like a two day period, same spot, 15 minute windows, da, 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 bring, I mean, just factory assembly line. She's never selling any prints. She's yeah. just trading dollars for hours. And every year her name is Jess. I'm like, Jess, why the hell don't you get a table, set up a bunch of prints on it, and let us know that you offer prints, early Christmas gifts, this, that, and the other, right? And she never does it. And I'm like, you, your, your business is never going to grow. Your business is just about what you can trade a dollar an hour for. And you, there's, there's only so high you can go. And parents are going to be like, pound sand, we're not paying that. If you offered prints, all of a sudden you're cracking open a new element to your business. And it's like, you've got that on the table too. If you walk in to every single, hold on, I'm gonna grab my stack because I'm gonna punctuate this. So, you know, most people don't know, and this is you talking to one of your freelance clients, most people don't know the differences between all the various different print types that you can print photography on. And so what I love to do is just come prepared with the stack. This is acrylic, one of the latest and greatest uh, on the block. And you can feel this, you can see this, shows, shows awesome, thick, beautiful, ready to hang, metal, one of the also newest kids in the block, very thin, ready to hang, don't need any frame, beautiful. You of course have canvas, right? Um, you can put these in floater frames or not, also ready to hang on the wall. Wood is also available, beautiful detail, beautiful texture on these things, they're ready to hang. And you could also do with the traditional fine art paper in a frame, right? If you're the guy that offers those, what happens every once in a while when every third or fourth gig they're like, hey, could you, could, you, could you rip off a couple of prints for me on the office? And all of a sudden, your gig that you were getting paid $1,000 just went to $1,800, $1,900, $2,200. Like, look at your AOV for very, very little effort. And the whole reason that you can do that is now you're completely plugged in, and you can offer all of this print on demand. You don't even have to touch anything, right? So now you're a photographer that's getting those gigs. Now you're a photographer that's not only offering this, but potentially offering the merch, too. And I could go through the whole merch spiel, but I don't want to do it. And then in addition to that, selling the fine art, right? Now you have three different bites at the apple and you're just getting more ROI out of your time, right? That's, that's what I love about the, the, the photography side of it. 
Anyway, yeah. you got me ranting. <laughs> yeah, thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Um, all right, I'm going to email all you guys this video, um, the video from the session today, all the links, all the everything that I mentioned. Um, for the people that we wanted to, to contact for a demo, we will contact you for a demo. I know on Friday on the session, just like this on Friday, um, we'll also be running a demo. Scott, I see your question. Don't worry, I'll come for you in a sec. And what else? Yeah, we've got, we've, we've got, we've extended whatever our January deal is, um, I think for another week or so to, to, um, you know, to accommodate everybody that we couldn't get over the new year. I know that's many of you. I'm sorry. We got crazy busy and that's just, that's just how it went. But did I lose Scott? I can't remember. Scott had his hand up and then I think he might've disappeared. Let me see if he's there. There you are, Scott. I'm going to unmute you again. I don't know if we answered your question or not or what. Okay. Your, your hand's up again. Go ahead, Scott. Can you hear me? Yeah, I gotcha. All right. Well, my question, you see my question there on the direct uh, texts? Did you send it to me earlier? And I'd, I'd probably get overwhelmed. Yeah, it's, I'm sorry. it's just a little ways down from the top. I just to, curious, this really, is... about uh, what if, what happens if art storefronts was to close its doors someday? Um, yeah, yeah. Great question. So with us, thankfully, you own everything. You own the URL. You own all the emails. You own all the customer contact information. And so, God forbid something like that happened. Um, all you would have to do is revert your URL to some other website provider, and you take everything with you. Okay. Which is, which is, by the way, like you know, an important aspect of what we believe at a fundamental level, right? Like, you know, you, maybe you saw the presentation or not, but. I think I think one of the biggest problems in this industry, full stop, is the fact that artists and photographers are out there selling and not knowing who their end customers are because they're selling through galleries, whether online or in person. The lifeblood of this business is knowing who purchases your work and then marketing to them for the rest of your art selling life. And so that's very, very important. So it's very, very important. The artist owns everything with us. You own everything with us. Practically speaking, though, um, our CEO has a long track record of entrepreneurship, um, owning businesses for a long time, never, ever selling them. So that's the, that's the best you can go off of, right? But I don't I don't see this business going anywhere for a long time. Even even you know if for some reason he did decide to sell, um, we've we've carved out like a really really strong niche. We don't really have any direct competitors because most people would say this is not a good industry to go into because a starving artists, right? Um, so we we have a lot of things going for us in that capacity. But you could. You could decide to leave at any point in time and take everything with you, and that is the whole difference. It is the whole difference. Okay. Well, that's pretty. That's pretty handy. Just yeah. wanted to know. Yeah. All right. Thank but, you. Yeah, but great question. Um, thank you guys all. Oh, Judy's got one. Okay, I'll ask a question from Judy. Go ahead, Judy. Um, I just was wondering for prints and things like that. How yes. many mega? At mega like what? How big do the files have to be to work? Yep, we have a we have an awesome system for that. So. You, you start out with whatever you have and you upload it into our system and our system, our software analyzes the quality of the image and then it comes back to you and tells you exactly what sizes you can output at. And then you sort of decide, well, do I want to be able to go bigger than that? If I want to go bigger than that, then I've got to do some tweaks and then you can decide to, to alternate things at that point um, as you see fit or not. So the system will okay. tell you. I understand. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. That wore me out. I appreciate you guys. Uh, we'll leave it there. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, again, Happy New Year. Everyone have a great rest of your week. And, yeah, hope to, hope to see you on the inside or on the outside or in a future session or whatever. And watch, watch that video. Um, we'll email it to you. But, you know, the top 10 takeaways from 2021, I think there's, there was a ton of content in that one that, you, that, that wasn't in this one that I think is really good um, that, that I want you to hear. It'll get it'll get you thinking in the right direction about about how to keep this how to keep this momentum going in your business uh, in 2022. But thanks again, you guys. Great rest of your week.